Today, on Commitment to Truth. That there is not a man who should be able to sweep our girls off their feet. Why? Because they know that they belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There should not be a woman that comes along that causes our our young men to derail. Why? It's because they know that they're suitable uh, to the King, that they belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Welcome to Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Each week, Pastor Cedric Brown and the pastoral team at Commitment Church strive to draw you into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we begin a series titled, Let's Re-Engage. Many churches have had a very difficult last two years, especially with COVID-19 rendering gatherings difficult to impossible. And once we regathered, it has been a challenge to feel close to one another. Because we are the body of Christ, we were made to be connected to each other. There is no time like now to begin to restore that connectedness that makes us the hands and feet of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here is Pastor Cedric, lead pastor of Commitment Church, with today's message. We bled into, like we did before, the second question was how do we meet some of the needs? Right, so dealing with biblical literacy and just teaching people the scriptures and 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 etc. Now, uh, in your handouts, you should have a list uh, of some other ways, you know, such as the bridge that they have on Wednesday nights at 6:30, youth fellowships and special events like uh, nights like Christian concerts that that they uh, body surf and stuff like that. You know, it was awesome. That was a, you know, and that was a good one. Like that's. That's what you, the youth group is about. I mean, it's, it is about, yes, the teenagers getting together having fun, sure, but it's building relationships and it's putting them in environments with lots of believers so that they can get a bigger view of what our Christian life is. It gets them outside of the bubble of the building that mm-hmm. we try to keep them in and it gets them out. And the Christian concert was... It was awesome. It was deep. It was hilarious to watch them because there was, <laughs> you hear a Christian concert, you're like, oh, praise and worship. Everybody's raising their hands. And yeah, there was that. There was depth to it, right? But there was this Christian, I'm blown away. There's a Christian rap, it, it, solid Christian biblical rap. The rapper is KB, is his name, um, is his initials. And it was such a wild combination of worship like praise and worship, because he takes like praise and worship lyrics and like makes them his hook. And then he raps like, and he goes and he doesn't hold back. It's not corny, okay? He raps during the verses and then he preached and he kept going this cycle. And it was, I never thought, I mean, I listen to all types of music. I'm no stranger to rap, but in that context, I couldn't believe how, how, connected to the Lord I felt through that and even some of them were like he was awesome and then at the end there was a hard rock concert this band called Skillet which I'm sure a lot of you know and they go in and Miles was moshing beating up the younger kids and but it was just such a great time of growing close to the Lord being in a godly environment mm. but they could still be themselves it was mm. fantastic and there's other things like yeah. that that we can do um, and to add on to that like sometimes like if you want to bring your friends out to like youth group things sometimes they don't want to like just go to a regular youth group like yeah. so like when we go out and do things like at Camden or the concerts or other things that we do tacos and bowling <laughs> <laughs> Those are good times where we can bring out yeah, our friends that's where point. they can do something that isn't churchy yeah, necessarily, yeah. Mm-hmm. but still learn the things that we would normally learn on a regular yeah. Wednesday. That's cool. That's cool. Sarah, were you going to say something? Um, I, Mike, I didn't even tell you this. So I, <laughs> I just, so recently I just started bringing like one of my closest friends and she didn't really feel comfortable like coming into a church because she's trying to expand on her faith. Hmm. So her being able to come to the youth group, it was something that she talks about all the time. She's like, oh, well, I don't want to come because it's in the church and I'm not, I'm not ready for all that yet. So when she started tagging along to the, uh, when she came to the first meeting, she was like, I've never actually sat down and like actually read the Bible. And she's like, there's a lot that I can learn 
and especially from the way that Mike preaches on Wednesdays. There's a lot that like there's a lot you can learn from him, and what he, like everything that's in the lesson. So when we started tagging along to the youth group like outings, especially the last one, she was like, um, I think I'm gonna like she's like changing everything. She's ready to start. She, she's like, well, one Sunday I'm gonna start coming to church with you guys. Like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start coming. I'm gonna be. <laughs> that's all. That's is. cool. Amen. 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 That's the way it works. What are you gonna say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and um, the same thing too, because I've also been bringing out my friend more because she doesn't get that experience hmm. in her home to like. Her parents are Catholic or whatever, but like she does, they don't go to church. Like mm. she doesn't really, she knows, but she doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. She knows about it, but she doesn't know of it. Mm. So I've been bringing her out more, and she's like, she'll tell me too. She's like, I really had fun. Like we like have to get out together again. Like that's good. And she enjoys like mm. coming out mm. with Amen. these groups. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't that great. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, again, we can go through the list, but the list is, is, is listed in your handout, and, and God is doing some wonderful things as it relates to meeting their, their needs. But the greatest need of all in every ministry is to make disciples who make disciples, ultimately. That's the ultimate goal is how do we help our youth grow so they can go? How do we help them grow so they can go? So we encourage our youth to be a part of our next step process you know, be formally become members themselves, not tag alone and be a, um, you know, a, an adopted member because of their parents. But no, you are a member of this church, just like your mom and dad is and our grandparents or whomever are members of this church. So we try to encourage them to matriculate through the entire next step uh, training process. Um, we again, the lessons, as you heard, are very uh, deep. We have uh, outreach, right? You want to talk about some of the outreaches you all have done to, to cause and say, we want to create pathways for you to go, right? Sure. The, one of the first things, we, the January, and February, so we like to do a community outreach of some sort once a month. Uh, so January and February, we just loaded up the truck with uh, donations of clothes that we had and some hot chocolate and went out to the transportation center over in Camden and um, just ministered to the homeless population, um, you know, addicts, mental illness, things like that, uh, out in that one spot. If you go there, if you're familiar with what I'm talking about, if you've been there, you know. Um, and um, it was such a good way to get the kids to experience something outside of their regular life. Um, and so to get them in that environment, at first they were terrified. I mean, you could tell, like they huddled in their little group, they hid behind a table, and that was it. But throughout the day, it was really nice to see them get more comfortable in that setting, to be ministering to the, the homeless and just loving on them, joking with them, having fun with them, you know, and just sharing that kind of love with them was really cool. Mm. And I think it's important for them, you know, you, as adults, we know, anytime you're in that kind of environment, you go and do something like that, it makes you grateful. And I pray too for our youth that they're in that they go out there and they see that and they're like, man, you know, mm -hmm. life could be completely yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. So then from that, uh, we had the opportunity to partner with least of these, who uh, go out to the community center that Susie leads in Camden, um, and uh, we were able to work with them on Mother's Day, doing outreach to the mothers and the children. Then uh, on Easter. We did uh, like a uh, Easter egg hunt and crafts and things of that nature. Um, so just to get them out there, to get them serving. Um, and uh, there's a basketball tournament coming up on June 25th, a three on three tournament that we did last year. Um, there's Apex Missions is coming in. There, there's just so, there's, you know, I didn't realize it until we were sitting there talking in the first service. I'm like, man, there's really a lot of stuff. Um, but if I may, before we talk about Apex, which is an amazing organization, there's such great stuff going on there, is uh, to serving, is we're really trying to encourage the youth to serve in the body of Christ, in this body, so that they have buy-in, so that they have investment in it. And um, there's a, a couple youth 
who have really taken to that, where one is going to work in AV, uh, the other wants to start working in his kids' ministry. And, you know, just, just like we were talking before, how there's, you know, I didn't realize, you know, it's a good point. There's no classification of teenager yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. Um, and I think we, under, we, we encourage our youth to get jobs, be more independent, take your studies seriously, be proactive in all these areas. But I just show up with me to church, you know, and we should have that same kind of motivation yeah. behind their activity here which is their spiritual future, which is the most important future, mm -hmm. as we do in their educational future, yeah. which I yeah. think sometimes, you know, can get skewed. That's important, yeah. you know, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. you know, I, I would love to see our youth yeah. become more involved, more bought in, yeah. so that this body of Christ, when they graduate and they leave your home, yeah. this is their family, yeah. their home anyway, yeah. and, and maybe they stay in, and yeah. are yeah. ready to you know, So just to build on that before we go to Apex is... I remember my kids, they, they would, they laugh now as adults, but I would always just say to them that, listen, I said, uh, you know, when you leave here, uh, Jesus goes with you. And they'd be looking like, what do you mean? mean? I'm like, you, you, you've professed to be a Christian, right? You're, you're a follower of Jesus. Yeah, I am. Well, his Holy Spirit lives within you. And wherever you go, he goes with you. They'd be looking like, what do you mean? And I said, oh, by, oh, by the way, just to let you know, he also tells me everything about you. <laughs> and I'm telling you, supernaturally, things would come up and I will find out about certain things randomly. And they're like, how did you find out about that? I said, I told you. He tells me everything about you. And, and, and what I say that because at the end of the day, we raise our children to leave us. We don't raise them to say, okay, I want you to live with me forever. No, we, we raise them to say, go. Be a productive adult. You go and, and, and find your place here on this earth for the glory of God. But our goal should be, well, go with Jesus. You know, let his spirit lead you and guide you. Let his word be a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. And, and this is one of the amazing stories that really inspired me as a father. So Charles Stanley, some of you maybe know him, very solid biblical teacher. His son, Andy Stanley, who was an amazing, you know, minister of the gospel, he was a rebel. So uh, Andy, I guess every, every rock concert that came through town wanted to go to this rock concert. And like any dad, and, uh, you know, Chuck, when Charles Stanley was like, no, no, son, I don't think you should go. I don't think you should go. You know, that's not what Christians do, right? <laughs> And I guess he pressed him, pressed him, pressed him, and beat him down enough that he ended up conceiving. He said, well, you know, uh, pray about it. Ask the Lord what you should do. Well, Andy came back and said, well, I prayed, and, and the Lord said, I can go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and his point was, that was the scariest thing to do as a parent, but to release your children to hear from God themselves. So I took his advice, and I started telling my children, I said, what, what is the Lord telling you? And then one time, as one of my children got a little older, uh, she wanted to sleep over with some friends, and, and she was an adult. She, could, she didn't even have to ask me, but she was living in her house. She asked permission, because she, you know, do you mind if I stay over at some friend's house? You know, they're, they're going to this college, and I'm going to sleep over at her place. And I said, so I said, what is the Lord telling you? She's why you got to always say that? You know, I can't believe it. You know, and then I said, no, seriously, go ask the Lord what you should do. And sure enough, she came back and said, well, uh, I, I believe the Lord's saying I can go. I'm like, okay, all right. All right, well, go, but let me give you some warnings. You know, I, I gave her the, the, the father-daughter lecture. Watch this. Don't put your cup down. To, you know, whole nine yards, right? So I'm like, oh, God, you know, what did I just do? So overnight came back and thanked the Lord. She reported back, that was the worst night I ever had. I can't believe it. She's so, you know, talking about the friend. I'm like, praise the Lord. I mean, my, I didn't tell her that, but underneath, I was like, praise the Lord. Thank God, you know. But there are times, parents, you just got to release them. They belong to him. But, but, but the goal is, God, give us the wisdom as a ministry to invest and pour in and pour in, support, 
your voice and their lives so that when they go, right, as the scripture says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, right, they will not depart from it. But the proper vernacular is this, it would not depart from them. What you put in them will never, ever depart from them. And that's the promise. Amen? And the youth group is a, is a great way to ease into that. So mm -hmm. it's not like, oh, I'm just letting my kid go yeah. here, there. Like, yeah. you know, it's, you, you can know that they're going to be in an, an environment where they get to exercise some independence. I'm not hovering over all of them. What are you talking about? Hey, you know, or what are you listening to or, or nothing? I let them be them. But they're in a place with other believers, other Christian for the, well, for now, yeah, we're hoping to change that. We want to get a lot of the unsaved in too. Yeah. But, but they're in an environment where, um, you know, there's like you've been saying in your messages, there's guardrails, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's a safe place for them to ask challenging questions and to experience a little yeah. freedom. Huh? Um, knowing that they have godly people mm -hmm. watching them rather yep. than letting yep. them start mm -hmm. experimenting with that freedom. Yep. Kingdom of God, guardrails, kingdom of God, and his righteousness. The kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added. Kingdom principle, kingdom approach, righteousness. Doing the right thing should be your guide in life. You know, in everything you do and all these things will be added to you. They'll become the men and women that they should be, that God's called them to be, which leads to you, bro, right? So this is Miles, everyone, and Miles matriculated through our youth group, and now he's kind of coming back to help Pastor Mike out. But then there's some other stuff that's happening with Apex, and Apex is this awesome ministry that they're sending. Well, we are, we're considered an Apex location. So churches throughout the United States of America will come here with their youth groups from middle school to high school and come to do missional work alongside our youth in our community, which is so cool. So we had our, our first group from Lancaster came last year. This year, there's a group from Minneapolis and New York that are coming to our, they're gonna stay in the building and we, we, we partner with, um, Echelon Fitness to help us use their showers and all these different things and, and, and ultimately allow them the space to do ministry through us and alongside of our youth ministry. Thus, now this young man, Miles, is going to be a, our Apex missionary. So Apex, well, let me back up. So Mike and I were, were saying, hey, man, I just believe God is doing something in Miles' life. Can you approach him maybe to see if God is leading him to, to come alongside you to help serve in youth ministry? He said yes to that. Weeks passed. I got this email from these guys who met Miles once when they came here and said, yeah, you know that young man, Miles? We just believe, you know, God may want to use him. You think he'll be open to become one of our Apex missionaries? So now he's going to be one of the young men who are, who's going to go into, uh, well, he's be here with us, he can go to other places after being trained and also train youth at other churches about doing, um, uh, if you would, community outreach and evangelistic work within, within a local uh, church. So that being said, Miles, what's happening? You want to tell us a little bit about that, please? So I'll start back to like when it all happened last year. Mm -hmm. So like last year, you said Apex that came last year with mm -hmm. Lancaster. And that's when Pastor Zay was a youth pastor at the time. And him and um, Pastor Taylor, they were setting up stuff and doing stuff together. And they had asked me, be like, hey, like, there's no youth here from our church. And we kind of want to give them, like, our church and, like, the feel of our church and not just have them just be with them and then just us with us. Like, they want other youth here. So you think you'd come out? And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? You know, I got nothing else to do. So <laughs> that whole week, I kind of just, like, sorry, I live, like, right down the street. So I would ride my skateboard down here every day and just kind of hang out with them and like just, mostly just hang out with them. So like I, the first day I came, they were all like shy and like didn't like really like want to speak. But then there were a group, a good handful that were talking to me. And then if anybody knows me, I'm very outgoing. So like, I'm gonna be in your face for like, yo, what's going on? Like, hey, you wanna do this, you wanna do that? Like, this is how I am. <laughs> so I did that and then within the first day, like I grew like, we all grew like very much liking to each other. Like we all like were able to hang out and play games. And so throughout the rest of the week, I was able to do their outreach with them and 
doing like just games with them and then like I think like the day before they left they went to the beach and so like they did their outreach that day and then I was like all right guys you know they because they were leaving that Friday I was like I'll see you guys and they're like no come to the beach with us like it'll be fun and so we went to the beach and then like I'm hanging out with like um two of the college leaders that were there Sam and his wife mm -hmm. um I'm drawing a blur on her name Megan. Megan. Megan, yes. Megan. Yeah. You guys are watching. How you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was hanging out with them and really just getting to know them and how they got into Apex. And then I was hanging out with, like, the other, like, people that were, like, seniors in high school, like, the, the youth. So the last day, the, guy, the director, um, I think, I'm not sure if it was Pete or the other guy. Uh, Dave. Peter, Dave. David. It yeah, was Dave. Dave. Mm -hmm. So he was talking to me, and he was like, hey, would you, like, look into it next summer? Da -da -da. And at the time, I'm like... Uh, I don't know, bro. Like that's that's like a commitment thing, and so no pun intended. <laughs> but so then, like this year, I'm getting more involved with the youth, and I'm helping out Pastor Mike with his youth and getting into that leadership role. And then he comes to me and was like, "Hey, like um, the people from Apex reached out to me." I'm trying to pass. Hello. Okay. Move your hand up a little bit. Did I yeah. break the mic? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. So he was like, they reached out to me and they were like, hey, we really want you to be here for the two weeks that we're here. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? So I just thought it was the two weeks, but there's a whole training that goes into it. So for a week, I'll be in Minneapolis doing my training there. And then I'll be here with them for the two weeks when the Minneapolis crew comes and the New York crew comes. But then that following week, I'll be in Kansas City doing like kind of like a debriefing with them and like how like the experience was and stuff like that so cool yeah, yeah awesome hey, amen that pretty cool you know how god is is now using him so you you found out today as well you have some some needs right yeah some some money necessities yeah yeah so how, how about how much do, do um, you or what do you need uh, financial support yeah financial support i think i need like a total of 1200 i believe they said mm -hmm. because just for like um just like flights and all that so i yeah. think the one way flight to minneapolis is 75 but then i think the other one is 1200 maybe okay so yeah your mic you have to raise your hand uh, don't don't hold the bottom Go. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So, and I believe like it's a total of twelve hundred, though I do believe. Okay. So, yeah. Awesome. It's twelve hundred then plus the one way ticket. Oh, okay, the one way. So, yeah. But the yeah. way flights are right now, it's probably like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. 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 Okay. So again, if you like to give towards, this is a he's our youth missions, um, and we want to encourage you to, you know, through the church app, or if you want to write a check or whatever. Uh, way you give towards the ministry, you can write in the memo, memo section, uh, Miles, M-Y-L-E-S, or you could say Youth Missions, something like that, but we'll make sure it uh, be earmarked specifically for him. Thank you again for listening to our series, Let's Re-Engage, From Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Ephesians 4, 14 through 16 says, as a result, we are no longer to be children, tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into Him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. As the fitted and held together body that we are, it is critical that we not only reconnect with one another, but serve together for the furthering of the gospel so that more and more can hear of Christ and be saved. If you want to listen to the previous messages in this series, or if you want to hear messages from other series, visit Commitment Church on YouTube or Pastor Cedric Brown on Spotify, Pandora, or other podcast providers. You can also visit us on our website, commitmentchurch.org. And if you live in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey area, we would love to see you in person as well. You can attend any of our services by visiting us at 2 Berlin Road South, Lindenwald, New Jersey, 08021. Thank you again for listening, and have a blessed and wonderful day.